Today we are here in my beautiful kitchen in Arusha, Tanzania. So today I wanted to bring you guys a little something special. So um, a big part of Tanzanian culture is food. It's a major thing, major, major, major thing. So I thought that I would have my dada make you guys some traditional Tanzanian food, which is usually um, on the menu today is lunch, um, is lunch. <laughs> My bad <laughs> is beef with ugali and some vegetables. This is typical. I would say a lot of people eat this sometimes on a daily, but they definitely usually don't go a week without it, especially ugali. Ugali is something that just a lot of people eat, especially here. Um, ugali is like throughout Africa. I feel like in South Africa they call it pop and just different places tell me what they call it at your place so i showed you guys a video that i made when i was attempting to do ugali which to me was a complete fail because it's actually really hard it's simple but it's really hard like it takes a lot of arm muscle that i clearly don't have <laughs> but i still tried like i still i still tried but here we have a pro okay my dada come this is my dada, say hi. hi. <laughs> this is Nima, she's our dada, um, Hope and I in our house. She's been with us for a while now. Um, and uh, she pretty much does all the cooking. I'm gonna get into like a dada and, and what's the purpose of a dada and why you should have one or it's up to you if you don't wanna have one, things like that. But she's gonna be the one making lunch. Um, and I'm going to have you guys be a part of it. I'll try to help, um, but I'm not really good with it. But we're we going to get into it. All right? Yeah. All right. So let me get into um, a dada and why you should have a dada while dada just comes and she starts prepping the meat and stuff like that. So? Yeah. All right. So what is the purpose of a dada? So basically what a dada is is like a helper around the house um i don't like to use the term made because i really don't like that term um i don't know why i just don't um but usually pretty much everyone has one in their house or at least people who you know can afford one and stuff like that depending on that that cost can 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 vary um depending on how many kids you have depending on what you want her to do it, it, it depends on a lot but an average price for a dada is probably between thirty thousand to shillings to the most that i've heard is like sixty thousand to shillings that's the most that i've heard um and the purpose of them is you know to cook to clean to help you around the house you know a lot of cultures especially like the maasai what they do is they have second third fourth wives because to be honest with you the expectations for a woman it's a lot and i realized that like i feel like a lot of people put pressure on americans to um to cook clean take care of your husband take care of your kids do all of this stuff but when you leave america and you go out throughout the world it's a community base people help each other women help each other if that's multiple wives if that's having a dad that that's having a grandma that you know what i'm saying it, i feel like it's only like that in america where it's like you're not a woman if you don't cook clean take care of your man you know perform sexual duties while taking care of the children and being exhausted and da 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 but it's not like that anywhere else and a lot of celebrities and stuff like that a lot of celebrities and people who just have a lot of money in the u.s have the perks of having basically dadas because they can afford it but for average people like myself in america like you can't afford to pay somebody thirty dollars an hour to help you out around the house so anyways um i'm not Masai and i don't agree with multiple wives that's just not happening but a lot of the time, especially when you talk to the Maasai people, the reason why they have multiple wives is to help the first wife with the house duties. Because it's a lot. Like, it is a 
lot. Um, so, you know, I feel blessed to have my Dada. My daughter, Saya, loves her. They adore each other. She's been great. She's been with us for, um, I feel like she's been with us for almost a year now. And she's been great. So, like I said, those are the average. So, if you were to hire Dada, that's how much it would cost. Which is normally around 32 shillings is about 15 US dollars per month. Um, if you go to the high end, which is like 60 to shillings, it's just like $30 a month. But our dada, because we love her so much and we want her to stay, we don't want her to, we don't want her to like, you know, want to be somewhere else and we want to make her feel comfortable and stuff like that. Um, she gets paid 150 to shillings, um, which is which is on the high end and she only takes care of uh one kid i mean we're gonna have more kids in the future but she only takes care of Sadie, which is my daughter um she cleans we have a three bedroom so she cleans around the house um things like that so um yeah she'll go to the market so the 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 Plus, if you have a dada, please send your dada to the market because when you try to go to the market yourself, you will get the muzungu prices rather than the local prices. But if you send the dada and she knows what she's going to cook, she knows all the stuff there. If you send your dada, then you'll just be paying the regular local prices and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's, that's really important. For me, I don't know how I survived all these years without a dada, y'all. <laughs> For real, for real. I've been so spoiled. Like, I don't want to wash dishes. Like, I don't want to do anything. I've been so spoiled. And treat your dada's good. I have friends and I've been in so many situations where the dada is, like, not even allowed to, you know, eat with the family. They're, like, they have to eat on the floor in the kitchen. Or they're not even allowed to eat or drink or enjoy themselves. You know, like for real a lot of these girls are young girls most of the dadas are young girls who are looking for a job and you know maybe they just got out of school and stuff like that and they don't have a job yet um they don't have a job yet and they're just trying to make some money um any way possible so treat them good you know for real like i, I can't stress that treat them good um because these are young girls you know my dada is actually a little um a little older which normally you won't find older dadas she is probably um maybe like uh i saw oh my god i had her id i forgot how old she is um but I, she's around like her 30s so it's not easy to find a dada that is that um older normally you do get girls like 17 18 which is why you know i'm trying to i'm trying to keep her i'm trying to hold on to her because my fear with young girls is my experience before i had her i had different dadas and they're young so they don't plan on staying forever finding a good dada in tanzania is hard like i'm not i've had so many people say to me like oh how do you find a dada it's just so difficult because they they come they go or some of them are just like really lazy they don't want to do anything they're just there to get the money so they don't want to work hard you know or they're thinking about other things and you know they're boy crazy you know like it's really difficult so you know mine we want to make sure that we take good care of her which is why she's been with us for so long and you know she's great with my kids she actually has a kid of herself but you know her kid stays with her mother um but we've offered you know like he can definitely like be here so he will come time to time but um they stay in a whole different other part of tanzania and that's they had that going on before you know i came into the picture um but she does struggle with school fees so on top of her pay we do pay for her son's school fees and she eats with us every night um she um we pray together it was very important for me before you find a dada make sure that you know what you want for me personally don't judge me but for me personally i wanted a christian dada because i wanted somebody that we can pray with someone that can be a part of the family not saying that other religions can't be a part of the family i just feel like it would be much easier for our children it would be much easier for us just for our household you know what i'm saying so 
I personally didn't want a like um, Muslim uh, Dada or something like that. Um, but that's just my preference. Not that I have anything against Muslim people. Please don't attack me. It's just what I wanted in my household. And it worked out pretty great. Um, you do have to be careful when finding a Dada because, you know, not everyone is good and you need to make sure that you know their family you need to make sure that you know what they practice and stuff like that because there's some funny stuff out there you know hope warns me all the time when we were looking for a daughter like oh you got to be careful because some you know some of these girls they'll do witchcraft and they'll do this and they'll do this so you just gotta <laughs> you just gotta be careful so the dadas that we recommend is the ones that you know their family so a recommendation by somebody else and when I say by somebody else not like a stranger don't get one from a stranger don't just like pick a girl off the street and be like hey like you be a dada because it's probably not gonna go well maybe it will but probably not um and don't say jewels on the run don't say I recommended it because I do not um what else what else should I say um, when it comes to dadas? Uh, make sure you interview them. Um, figure out, like, you know, is it short term? Is it long term? With our dada, we, um, when my daughter is here, she stays here. So we have a room for her. She spends the night. She take, she, she, she's here 24-7. When my daughter is not here, my daughter's in New York with her father she comes and she goes so she she comes here during the day she does everything she needs to do and then at dinner time afterwards she leaves and she goes back home so you know make sure that you have an agreement um the only thing that sucks i would say is the language barrier but actually my dada is in school for english i told her that it's very important for her to be in english so it's very important for us to make sure that she goes to school for english um, because obviously like all of our kids will be speaking English as well as Kiswahili but we want to make sure that she also speaks English um, you know it's a long-term relationship it's a long-term relationship and we've made it clear like you know when we told her we said we don't want somebody temporary we want somebody who's gonna see our kids grow up we want somebody that we can send to school so they can learn English we want somebody that really will fit into the family when people come to my house they know like oh yeah like that's that's their dada like she's like family she's like a sister you know what i'm saying um rather than like a maid but that's pretty much all i would have to say about dadas um and as you guys know i've had some bad experiences with dada if you have not seen the video about um my home update the last home that i had in enduro <laughs> with the woman um that's my final thought my final thought is not just with dadas but with anybody that you do business with in tanzania when you give them the money make sure that they sign off on it so that way you can prove that they received their money because we trust our dada and she, we've had that relationship with her where we know she wouldn't cross us like that but from my experience with my old dada you know i had a situation where she said that i didn't pay her and i actually did pay her but i had no proof and you know you can go to jail for someone saying that they did a service that you didn't pay for and to be honest with you it happens a lot like it it, it happens a lot because you know you have some people who are just money hungry and stuff like that so they'll try to get you because you're a foreigner and stuff like that so just please be careful any business i don't care what business it is like we just went to the bank the other day and um we opened up a bank account and they were like okay well we're gonna process it tomorrow but then they asked for a deposit so i was like okay i want in writing that we gave you this deposit because you just have to cover your behind um you know it's just not you just have to cover your behind so that's my advice so let's get into some lunch All right, so she's gonna start on the beef. So here we have some uh, some beef chunks. 
we have some tomatoes, some garlic, sorry, ginger, some garlic, and then we have these greens. They're kind of like collard greens and carrots. So now she's going to prep this. So she's just prepping everything right now. You know, she's cutting the greens. Um, she's about to prep the beef. Um, by the way, this beef is completely fresh. So we get it from the butcher. We don't get it from the supermarket. We only get fresh beef. So for two kilos of beef, it will cost you about 16,000 to shillings, which is about $7. And that will usually last us for about two weeks. So she's just cutting it in little chunks right now. Um, so that way, you know, there's enough for everybody. And also I like it small. I don't like it too big. And you'll see later on in the video, that's how we eat it. All right, so now we got our beef going. Yeah. Now we have our beef. Look how beautiful. I got these new cans and I love them. So she's gonna pour some water in them. She's just seasoning it a little bit. Very light seasoning. You don't need any heavy seasoning. Very light seasoning. And what she's doing right now is she has the fire because she's going to put this to a boil. Okay. And now it's gonna boil so we'll come back when it boils so right now she's grinding up some ginger so she cut the ginger in half and she only takes a very little about as much as you see as the garlic clove and she just grinds that up and then also she is gonna grind up the garlic clove with it as well yep sure. all right so what she did was she put the ginger inside as it's boiling and then she's cooking it now. So before she puts any other ingredient, it's just ginger, let it cook, and then we're gonna add some more ingredients. The ginger is gonna be in there for about five minutes before she adds the other ingredients. So while that meat is boiling, we are gonna start prepping the other ingredients so we can put inside the meat. So we're just cutting up the onion right now. Guys, I love this purple onion. It's really hard to find white onions here. In order to find white onions, you do have to go to some of the Mazungu shops. And she's peeling this carrot. Guys, I never ate so much carrot besides when I came to live in Tanzania. I'm telling you, I never used to eat carrot. And now I eat carrot almost on a daily. So she's just shredding this carrot, making it real fine. Ooh, y'all, if y'all could smell what's going on in this kitchen right now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. Now we got these green peppers popping off. You know, people used to say to me all the time, if your food is not colorful, then it ain't right. And I, I really learned that being here in Tanzania. Now we got this eggplant, you know, she's, yo, you see how, yo, she is so lit when it comes to her knife print. I would have cut myself already. She is professional, okay? Cutting up this eggplant. Yes, y'all, look how colorful this plate is. Oh, and you can taste all the flavors when my dad I cooks. I mean, I'm telling you guys, she's really the best. Well, this is what your beef should look like. So now she prepping this tomato, okay? So what she did is she cut the outside of it, and now she's about to cut it in little pieces. Y'all, tomato is so crucial to pretty much every Tanzanian meal. Like, we have to have tomato in the house. It just, oh, it just makes, like, 
meal so thick and rich like it's so amazing so amazing y'all look how colorful this plate is like let's get into it talk about healthy talking about having a good heart come through health look how beautiful wow If your mouth is watering at this point, I'm completely here with you. So what she did towards the end is she added a little bit of coconut, um, coconut milk into it to give it that creamy, rich flavor. Between the coconut milk and the tomato, ooh, it's just, ah, God. So now what she's doing is she's just transferring it to a hot plate to make sure that um, the food stays hot. So when we eat it, it's nice and warm. Even if we eat it an hour later, these hot plates will keep it hot. All right, so now that the meat is done, she's going to start prepping these greens. So these greens are called saddle at Chinese. I am so sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but I tried my best. I even practiced like 10 times before making this video. Um, so I apologize if I, still, if I still said it wrong, but it's two different greens that's mixed, mixed together. I have no idea why it's called that, but it tastes so good. So now that the greens have been washed, she's going to cut them up very finely in small, small, small pieces. You have to make sure that you wash pretty much everything that you get from the market because it is literally from the farm. And as you know, when you have farm food, it is has dirt on it. Sometimes it can have, you know, um, insects and stuff like that. That's what's so amazing about just having natural food. When you go to the food in the supermarket, everything is clean, prepped, and, and 
all of that um stuff that's not natural when you get it out of the actual you know farm so now she's just cutting up the onions again with these beautiful purple onions and she is getting into these um carrots again with grinding it finely oh guys i'm telling you i wish you guys were here to share this with me all right so let's start cooking them All right, y'all. So it is ready. You see how big it was, and then now it's like strength, and there's just so much flavor in there. It's so natural. None of that processed nonsense. So she's about to put it on the hot plate, and it's ready. So now we're getting started on this ugali. Okay, now if you guys don't know what ugali is, ugali is throughout the world, okay? But it's ugali here in Tanzania. It is maize. So if you guys have not seen my video of how maize is, be is processed, please go check that video out because then you will be able to see um, how maize is made and then you can see how do you make ugali, which is a great video. So please go check it out. So right now she just has some water. She put the maize in it and she's going to, you know, pretty much let it thicken. I tried to make <laughs> this ugali and... It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of arm work and it's hard, but it's it's amazing. You see how it's starting to thicken up and you know, it takes a lot of arm muscle like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know, adding more ugali and make it thicker and you know, just it has to be real thick. Um, but you saw how when she started off, it was very liquid. And then now it's like, it's processing, baby. Like, it's just going. Oh, I'm so excited. So this is what your ugali should look like. You know, not like mine. Um, but she did an amazing job. I thank my dada every day for making breakfast, lunch, and dinner for us. Sometimes I do get in the kitchen, but most times she's the one who uh, gets into the kitchen. It's probably why I'm losing all this weight because of all this healthy food. But yeah, y'all, this is how you make the ugali. So this is beef stew with greens and ugali. So let's sit down at the table and let's see what it's going to look like. So we have the beef stew, the greens, and the ugali. And let the church say amen. Y'all see, I be eating good out here. Sorry, y'all. The camera quality started messing up a little bit because it, it was just tearing about how amazing this meal looked. 
So this is how this meal is traditionally eaten. Um, and I'm telling you, it tastes so much better when you eat with your hands. It's really amazing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please subscribe, share. Tell me if you like stuff like this because I will make more videos. But a lot of people have been asking me about food here in Tanzania. So I figured I would share with you guys. All right. See you later. Bye.